morning. I'm really excited about uh, the uh, sermon series uh, that we're going to be doing here at Trinity entitled One Congregation, One Book, uh, and studying in particular the book of Acts, one of my favorite parts of Scripture. It's a, really a story about the world as it existed, and it also parallels to the world in which we live today. We're going to see that our world is very similar to that world in, in the first century. We see the early church engaging in a hostile world with the love of Jesus Christ. And that story begins in, uh, in, in, uh, in the book of Acts with the celebration of Pentecost that we just celebrated a couple of weeks ago. What we see in that story is that something changed in the life of the disciples. They became different people. The story tells us that the Holy Spirit descended upon the disciples as they were in the upper room, the very same upper room where they celebrated the Last Supper with Jesus. Luke tells us that it was like tongues of fire descended on their heads, and they received a special gift to be able to speak in languages that they did not know. They go down into the streets where they meet a crowd of, crowds of people that were speaking a lot of different languages, indeed languages that represented uh, many of the known languages of the world in those times. They were probably Jews that had come in for the festival of, called Pentecost in Jerusalem. And the disciples shared with them the story about Jesus. They shared the ministry that he did, the teaching that he offered. They told them about his crucifixion, his resurrection, his ascension. And the people listened and heard. The Spirit led them to prophesy. And to tell them that Jesus was the ruler that had been promised in the Bible. Now, the Jewish people had been waiting for this moment for over 500 years. The book of the prophet Daniel was written 500 years before. And he says in that, that he makes a prediction that in 490 years, the Jewish exile would finish and the Messiah would come, the Christ would come to reestablish God's reign on earth. Only a few years before, John the Baptist had foretold that the coming one would carry out a baptism of wind and fire. And now was the time. Now was the day. The Spirit comes and the disciples speak those other languages. And when people see them, they, they wonder whether or not they're drunk. They're probably acting in such, a, in such a happy state. They're excited. They're, they're happy and maybe even a little bit confused as they're speaking these languages that they didn't know before. And so the people are probably looking at, at them thinking they're a little bit crazy or that they've had too much to drink. But then Peter reminds the crowd something that one of the prophets named Joel had said. Joel talked about this last day, this coming of the Spirit. And he says this, In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my Spirit and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs in the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. And then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So what did that mean, that these last days that were going to come. Well, really, it was a general term for the time to come, a time when the promises would be fulfilled, that the undeniable presence of God would be active in the world. You might think of it as uh, in a novel or in a movie uh, where you reach that climactic uh, time in the, in, the, in, the, in the book or the movie, or if you're on a journey and you finally reach your destination. But in this context, context, it's also a beginning. New things would start to happen with Jesus as Lord. The people of God would go through a time of instability and uncertainty, 
But ultimately, God would create something new, and the new creation would start with God's own people. At Pentecost, the Spirit is poured out upon a lot of people all at once. And there's no discrimination between slave or free, male or female, young or old. They are all chosen, all gifted, all Spirit-filled and Spirit-led. And we see a unity of Spirit with people from all over the known world, like, like the points on a compass. And Peter becomes the spokesperson. The same Peter who failed Jesus only a month and a half earlier by, de- by denying him and then hiding with the rest of the disciples. In verse 22, Peter begins to speak. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed him. And killed him by those hands of those outside of the law. But God raised him up having freed him from death because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. What he is saying is Jesus, the crucified one, is the Messiah, promised by kings and prophets for generations. Jesus is the one that they've been looking for, a Savior, a Messiah, a Lord. Peter goes on in verse 32, this Jesus God raised up, and all of us are witnesses, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit. He has poured out this that you both see and hear. They were witnesses, and it's all about their witnessing, their experience of Jesus, They had traveled with Jesus. They had heard his stories, his parables that he taught. They had seen the miracles. They experienced the crucifixion. They were there at the resurrection. They saw Jesus ascend into heaven. And now finally they see that promised gift that Jesus said he would send to them, the Holy Spirit. They're telling their experience of God in Jesus And those first leaders and teachers in the church often had four elements to their teaching and proclamation. They would first announce that this new age had come. The time was now. They would tell about the ministry, death, and resurrection of Jesus. They would show where Jesus has fulfilled the Old Testament. And then they would also offer a call to repentance. When Peter is done talking to the people who were listening, they were so convinced and convicted by his teaching that they asked him, what should we do? And he responds in verse 38, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, and for your children, and for all who are far away, Everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. 3,000 people became Christ followers. Now that is an effective sermon. The power of the resurrection, the outpouring of the Spirit is a sign and an invitation to new life for each one of us. And it begins with you and I seeking God and the things of God, confessing our brokenness and receiving the promise and love of God in water and spirit. The good news is that Jesus is our Lord and his Spirit makes a difference in your life and in my life. The power, from on God, the power from God on high is on you. And it comes to us through the baptismal promises, as basic as breath, as refreshing as a cool wind on a hot day. You can make a difference because a difference has been made in you. 
The world can be different when you follow the Prince of Peace, the Lord of Life, when you love God and love neighbor, when you repent and turn to God. The salvation that Peter proclaimed can become a present reality in our lives to those who hear and believe. But make no mistake, Jesus is our true King and Messiah. More than any of the pseudo-gods we create for ourselves, like money or fame or power or people or race, we follow Jesus more than we follow the authorities, more than we follow the mob. We kneel to the crucified and risen Jesus who loves you to death and offers life in the spirit for those willing to follow. He is the Lord of our life. Listen to what Luke describes after Peter's message in the people's confessions. He continues in verse 42. They, the people, devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, they spent much time together in the temple. They broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all of the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The result of Peter's proclamation is a new family, a new community of reconciliation and love. And what happens is the people see that and they say that they want to make a difference too. They say to themselves, I want to be like those people, like those who follow Jesus. And it becomes a community united in purpose and action. And notice what those actions are. They're listening to the teaching, really listening fellowship and partnership made possible by reconciliation they're sharing the communal meal the eucharist they're praying they're believing they're sharing resources to care for one another they're being generous with what they have they're having joy in their hearts and they're praising god you and i don't pick and choose which one of those list of actions we like or don't like we can't separate them all are a part of our communal life together. And it's been that way for 2,000 years. The early church of Acts that we see in chapter 2 set the model for all of us to follow. So welcome to the journey of one congregation, one book. Amen.